Uh, good morning. I thought I'd wait a couple of minutes, see if we could uh, drag some other people in off the street. And so welcome to another gorgeous late summer day. Um, now, today, I'll ask you to keep in your prayers Peter Rumar, Ruth Grant, Olive Poff, and Lorreen Crooks. Now, you'll remember, um, not everybody remembers names. Lorreen is Kalea's mom. She hasn't been here for a while. She's quite sick. Um, and our condolences this week go to Eleanor Patterson, whose older brother, in his 97th year, died this week. Bill Town and that family is part of the history of the United Church of Canada. Bill Town was a lawyer in Renfrew, third generation lawyer, and related to the Methodist Reverend Chown, who was one of the architects of the United Church of Canada. The service for Bill Chown will be at Trinity St. Andrew's Church tomorrow, visitation and funeral from one to three at TSA. So, um, now, this week we pray for First United Pastoral Charge, that's in Ottawa, and My Father's House Ministry. Okay. So we have a few announcements for you. Um, stewards, as you know, we're meeting tomorrow night at 7 in the parlor. And um, my apologies for <clears throat> to those who came to Wesley for the arthritis presentation yesterday. I did a better job of advertising this time, and right after all the advertising was confirmed, we had to change the date to next Saturday. So same time, same place, 10 o'clock in the hall downstairs with a physiotherapist, Dr. Samshan Moodley. So it, it'll be uh, very helpful. There are lots of us who have arthritis in various places, and he, we hope we'll have some answers for us. Um, I have tickets, as does Rhonda, for the Asian dinner that is a Sunday dinner. We thought, you know, Sunday night dinner. Now, when I grew up, Sunday night dinner was most often roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Well, this time, you don't have to go to Asia. It's cheaper to come to Wesley on Sunday night, November the 10th. The dinner tickets are $30 per person. It's a fundraiser for Wesley Church. And we are enormously fortunate that Lily, and her husband, Tiger, have come. I don't think they came from China to Pembroke only to serve Wesley Church, but we are very fortunate that they do. And Tiger is a professional cook. He had a restaurant in China, and we will have an opportunity to see how he does it. Or not see, taste how he does it. Um, now, um, I will put up a menu downstairs. I started my page and I have my laptop with me. Um, maybe I'll get it printed out by, uh, definitely by tomorrow or by next week. Um, the Christmas market is happening the following week. And we are delighted to see Lorene and Catalea Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, the Christmas market is Friday, November the 15th, and Saturday, November the 16th in the Fellowship Hall. And I know the Kiwanis Club will have information about a concert that they have on the Friday night, so that's going to be a good weekend. Um, if anybody has uh, donations, baking, uh, preserves, pickling, uh, for the sale, we would be more than grateful to receive them. So next week, we won't be here. The service will be at Zion Church. It's a communion service. And you'll get to sleep in. Uh, the uh, service at Zion starts at 11. <laughs> so um, you, can, uh, you can enjoy that. And uh, if you're marking your calendar, just a heads up, another more than a month from now, the next card party will be the 2nd of December. So lots happening. Good morning. As you can uh, imagine, the weather outside, it's absolutely amazing. Don't stay in. Spend as much time as you can outside because that is not going to last long. We would like to welcome those who are here for the first time or returning member. We are so blessed to have you with us this morning. We begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather belongs to the Algonquin First Nation. We light the Christ candle to remember today the missionaries, the missionaries, doctor, nurse, engineer, teachers, who have been traveling on the planet for many years until today doing the work of Christ. May this Christ candle shine in the hearts of the people that they are serving and also into the lives of the missionaries so they continue to do the work of Christ. Tell me the stories of Jesus, number 357.
Shall we turn to the bulletin, please? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, for the Lord our God is very great. God is a cloth with honor and majesty, wrapped in brightness like a garment. God stretches out the heavens like a tent, riding on the wings of the wind. O oh Lord, you have made each unique creature. With all of them, we come to praise you. Praise be to you, O oh God, for the wonders of your creation. You spin the galaxies and stretch out the seas to the farthest horizon. You lift the curtains of down to end the night. You give the earth its seasons and each creature its lifespan. Breathing life into each precious soul. And so we come to praise you, knowing human greatness is a mere shadow of you. Breathe your spirit into, our, into us once again and inspire us to save you with the creativity and the commitment and the honesty and humility. We meet in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Together we say, Lord Jesus, you call us to walk your way in the world, saving our neighbors and loving our enemies. We confess these are not easy choices for us. We seek acknowledgement for our own achievements and enjoy being saved. Forgive us for seeking our own way rather than your way. While it is true that we have all sinned, it is great truth that we are forgiven through God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Humble, seek the mercy of God, and so be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. Amen. You may be seated, please. And may I ask the young one to come to this side, please. Nope, nope, over here. All right there. Thank you. So this is for all of us. So this is uh, um, for Lily, Raymond. Raymond, look at me. Look at me, Raymond. Catalia, how are you doing, my friend? All is well? Good. It's nice to see you this morning. Good. I am going to um, tell you to do me something. And you do it, and then next Sunday, I'm going to ask you, please, to come to Sunday school because I'm going to ask you if you did it. And I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask your parents to tell me if you did it. Okay? Lily, are you listening? Are you listening? Brianna? Raymond? Catalia? Good. So I'm done with you. I'm going to the parents. Dear parents of these young kids here, I'm going to do something with them, and I want you to follow. So from this week, this week, I want you guys to do something to your parents. Are you listening? Something extraordinary to your parents. What it is, I don't know. You come up with some ideas, and you do it nicely. I'm going to give you a good example. So you may decide to make a breakfast for them. It's up to you. You may decide to say, I'm going to take your cloth and put it in the laundry and wash it for you. And then after that, I put it in the dryer. And then after that, I'm going to fold it nicely and put it in the cupboard. That's up to you. You may decide to say, well, you know what, auntie, I'm going to put the garbage outside today. This week is a garbage day. I'm going to put the garbage out for you. Instead of them doing, you do it. Okay? 
So find something very special. Something very special and do it. And then when you come back next Sunday, we're going to find out what it is. Because today, we are learning, Catalia, we are learning about how Jesus, he was the son of God, but he came to save. He became a servant. Instead of being the king sitting on the palace, a big mansion, sitting on a big chair, being saved by the angels and stuff like that, he decided to be a servant. He even washed the feet of his disciples. So if you want to wash the feet of your aunt, just go and do it. Right? Whatever you want to do this week, I want you to do something very special. And next week, I'm going to ask Brianna's mom, she's going to tell me, if she is not here, I'm going to call her, Brianna, and your mom, she's going to tell me over the phone what you did, okay? Catalina, I'm going to call. If you are not here, I'm going to call and find out what did you do special to your mom or to your dad, okay? Okay, I want you guys to repeat after me, and the parents, may you help us, please. Lord Jesus, we thank you for becoming one of us and be a servant. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be servants. Amen. Okay. Holy One, you are the source of wisdom for the ages. 
send the Holy Spirit to open the scriptures for us so that we may grow wiser as we listen and save you more willingly as we live. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. It's chapter 53, verses 4 to 12. Now, Isaiah was one of the major prophets. He lived about 700 years before the birth of Jesus. And in, in these verses, he's writing to the... Israelites, and and a Jew reading these words or hearing these words 2,700 years ago um, were to, would understand that he is Israel and he is suffering. Israel, the Israelites had been captured they're thinking God has rejected them, God is punishing them, but he, Israel, is going to see better times. Now we go ahead 700 years and Christians then and now read these words and interpret he as the Messiah. And all the way through, there's this um, vision of the Messiah. And the idea of hard times, how do you deal with hard times, is something that seems to be a question that people deal with at all times. So, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, though he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. And now we turn to Psalm, Psalm 91, verses 9 to 16. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tents. 
for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I will be reading the gospel a little bit later. There is nothing good in this world like to be invited to a big party where not only you will be seated with a group of very important people, but you will be surrounded by great people, great player, if it's a hockey for Canadian, if it's a baseball, it was, if it was tennis, or if the greatest of the politicians, or lawyers, or scientists, it doesn't matter. But to be closer, to be among the group of these elite, we call them, it's a joy. To some, it makes us feel good. It makes us feel we are important. We are important. If you love to watch news like me and you follow what is happening in the world, you realize what we are about to read is completely contrary to the popular belief. Because in Mark chapter 10, we have these two students of Jesus Christ asks and answer the question, how does one become great? How do you become great? There has been any number of uh, very important uh, movie stars, singers, as I say, in soccer or baseball, it doesn't matter what kind of, of game that will elevate people to be great. Or oh, we always call them the greatest of all time greatest of all time. Today's gospel reading begins with the two of Jesus' disciples grasping for greatness and they understand it. James and John want to sit at Jesus' right hand and his left when he comes into his glory. I want to be there. I want to be very close to Jesus when he returned. They wanted to be great in the kingdom of God. We want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. 
every one of us. But they clearly don't know what that means. Jesus offers them a path to greatness. But it is a very different path than the one they had in mind. He called his disciples together and said to them, and now I read, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be saved, but to save, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10, verse 30, 43 to 45. Saving others, Jesus tells us, is the path to true greatness. And Jesus offered his own life as the model of become great by saving. Jesus is not usually called the great one. But there can be no doubt that no single person has altered the course of world history more than Jesus. Even non-Christians will agree to that. Jesus was great by almost any standard. But in this gospel reading, he does, not, he does something quite radical. He redefined greatness for us all. He tells us that the path to true greatness lies in service. And he is not only teaching us this new path, but to greatness. He lives it. The Son of Man came not to be saved, but to save. I don't want to go into what Jesus did and did not, because you read the Bible all the time and you understand Jesus, he healed the sick. Jesus, he listened to the lowest. Jesus, he touched the women. Jesus, he never condemned anybody. Jesus, he went to the territory that was regarded as the territory of savages, the outcasts, the pagans. Jesus, he went there. Jesus, he sat on the table with the people that were regarded as the very bad people in the community, the tax collectors of that time, the people of higher authority. He sat with them. He talked with them. He ate with them. Jesus, he resurrected the dead. Jesus, he did so many things that I can stand, stand here and tell it to you from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Why did he do all of this? Because the Son of God came not to be saved, but to save and to give his life for us. The world has all had, ha, always had a different idea of what it means to be great. And so Jesus' own disciples, I just want to give you an example of people, and maybe you may find which one of these you want to follow. It's not too late. I will start with Albert Schweitzer. Albert Schweitzer is a famous Lutheran missionary who knew this well. He was the oldest son of a Lutheran pastor in Germany. But he did not start out as a missionary. He studied theology 
and he was he, and he and was also a very gifted organist he was ordained and become a world renowned theologian he wrote a famous book i have it on my shelf if you want to borrow it the quest of the historical jesus he was the great theologian a great organist as i said an incredibly gifted person but when he was 30 years old he abruptly decided to, to change the course of his life and to become a missionary doctor he abandoned his promising career went to medical school and became a doctor and then he headed to africa in order to become a medical missionary he eventually built a hospital and a leper colony and in 1952 he was awarded the nobel peace prize for his effort but what strikes me about albert more than his many accomplishments is that he discovered the wonderful secret of the christian life that we are called not to be saved but to save and that when we live with this desire to save others we find happiness meaning and fulfillment that we cannot get by being saved i told the young one here this morning if we want them to be the future church they need to learn how to volunteer they need to learn how to do things for free the other day i asked the young man can you please take the dishes from the dishwasher and listen to this the dish the dishwasher clean the dishes dry the dishes just for him to take the dishes from the dishwasher and stack them in the shelf accordingly he did it and then he asked me dad yes how much are you going to pay me and then I was like for what and there's like but i did the job i worked what a generation we are preparing lily and your husband may god bless you young lady may god bless you i'm really amazed muse to see you there seven absolutely blow my mind to see young people that they are giving out their talents and their gift to save the society albert summed this up in famous quote of his and this it's marked in the book every person i know who has been truly happy has learned how to save others those who are truly happy are not spending their lives lying on a bench somewhere on the beach somewhere having people cater to their every every, every whim those who are truly happy are who have found a meaningful life have learned how to save others mother teresa another well known christian who recognized this true truth is a powerful in a powerful way 
was Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She saved the poorest of the poor in India. Truly living as a servant of all. Many people wanted to live as she lived. So she began teaching a simple path. Here is Mother Teresa's simple path, which I used to keep on a business card in my wallet. I just grab it from my wallet. I type it here. The fruit of silence in prayer, the fruit of prayer in faith, the fruit of faith is love. I'm going to read it again. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. That woman was brilliant. That woman was a genius. That woman was a divine. She left everything in the former Yugoslavia at that time. She left the, the good house. She left the good covenant. She decided to go into what we, the West, we will call the savages. She went into a very dangerous place. Everyone who has found happiness and true peace, to put it another way, has learned to save others. The peace that we all want and that our world hunger for cannot be measured by the number of servants we, say, we have, but instead by the number of ways in which we have found it to save others. And finally, let's come back to our generation, the Martin Luther King Jr. Let me mention one more person. This man, he once preached a very famous sermon on his very gospel reading, on this very gospel reading. And he helped his listener see a path to greatness that they assumed was unavailable to them. Oppressed, poor, often uneducated, with the challenges that we have troubled even imagine. They couldn't imagine that they could ever become great. But Martin Luther King used his gospel reading to show them a different path to greatness that is available to all. Here is what he said. If you want to borrow the book where I get this, you can come to my office and I have one. Jesus gave us a new norm of greatness, Martin Luther says. If you want to become important, wonderful, if you want to be recognized as wonderful, if you want to be great, wonderful, but recognize that he who is great among you shall be your servant. That is a new definition of greatness. If you want to be important, that is wonderful. If you want to become, to be recognized, that is wonderful. If you want to be great, that is wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. And this morning, the things that I like about it, by giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great because everybody can save. It is not only a group of three women that can feed 
90, 80, an average of 70 people every Saturday here at this church. Not only three. All of us we can save. We don't have to give people food, but we can give people knowledge. We can open people's way of thinking. That's this lady we work together in Ottawa, and she is a linguistic, she was a linguistic professor at the University of Ottawa. She retired just when I was about to finish up my school. And then she picked up a new career to help newcomers in this country to learn English. If you see how many students attend her classes every Friday evening, you will be shocked. And she do all that free of charge. And now she pick up another thing. She pick up another service. Now she's helping the new immigrants in this country to fill up their papers properly. She's not a hired lawyer. But when they fill up this application, they'll take it to her for her to proofread. So one Friday, actually there was a funeral in Pembroke. I finished up a funeral. I went down to Ottawa. And then she called me. She said, Zachariah, do you mind please coming to my house? I have something I need your help with. So I went over and uh, she had uh, like that much papers stuck on her file. She want me to help. She's not getting paid. I'm talking at the age of 83 now. You don't have to have a college degree to save. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. Martin Luther says, you don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to save. You don't have to know Einstein theory of relativity to save. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamic in physics to save. You only need a heart full of grace a soul generated by love, and you can be that servant. Everybody, my dear friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, can be great. We can be great because every one of us, we can save. We, you only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated, generated by love, and some of the greatest people this world has ever seen had a little more than that. With a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love, they found a way to save others and devoted their lives to saving others. And we can do the same too. Following the example of Jesus, we can become great by saving others, by looking for opportunity to give to others what Jesus first gave us. And when I say to give, don't think about money. Let me go back to Mother Teresa. She never gave money. Let me go back to Albert. He never gave money. Let me go back to only 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. They never gave anybody a penny. 
but they taught us how to be accountable to this life and the life after, and that is more than money. Friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, following the example of Jesus, we can become great by looking for opportunity to give to others what Jesus first gave us. The Son of Man came not to be saved, but to save. And he invites us to do the same. To the glory of God. Amen. One, nine, one. What can I do? One, nine, one. I'm not sure if this hymn, we know it. Do we know this hymn? Yes. Okay. One, nine, one. Together we pray. Gracious God, we offer you these gifts, small tokens of our love for you. Bless them with the power of your Holy Spirit, so they may accomplish more than we can even imagine. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Amen. You may be seated, please. God of each and every life, you open our eyes on the world you love to show us your presence and purpose in all creation. We thank you for the wonders of the season as they change and for the gifts of love and compassion you offer us through friends and strangers. We pray for the earth as it struggles to support your, your many creatures. Make us better stewards in creation and kind neighbors to both a friend and a stranger. God, in your deep mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of justice, you open our eyes on the world to show us its struggles and conflicts. We see the burdens many are carrying and the way differences create division. We pray for all those struggling with the daily expenses these days and for those feeling stressed over hard choices. Show us how to support them in difficult and mend relationship in our community. God, in your deep mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you open our eyes on the world to show us suffering and despair. We see challenges for health care all around us and share the impatience to improve access to needed treatments in so many communities. We pray for those who are suffering in so many places in, a, in the world you love. Give us strength and compassion to all who provide life-giving care and courage and hope to all who wait for healing. God, in your deep mercy. Together, we pray the last paragraph together. God of wisdom, you open our eyes on the world to show us its complexities. We see countries locked in old animosities and communities overwhelmed by fresh upheaval. We pray for millions displaced in current conflict and by natural disasters. Open the eyes of the leader here and around the world to the suffering of the earth and those in their jurisdictions, and open all our eyes to where we can participate in solution to solutions which break your heart and ours. God, in your deep, hear our prayer. And so we pray for your kingdom to come in the world, in the word Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember, God is your refuge, watching over you to guide you on your way. So may the God who made you, the Christ who made you, and the Spirit who brings you life, bless and keep you now and always. Amen. I need thee every hour, 671, will be our closing hymn.